Welcome everyone to another chess video. In this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about forks. So forks are not a kitchen utensil when talking about chess. They are a strategy. So let's look at this board that is completely blank and let's set up a fork. So uh, let's play out some standard uh, beginning moves. So d4, d5, uh, bishop f4, knight to f6, knight to c3, uh, g6, just preparing to fee and shadow that bishop. Uh, knight to b5. Now, immediately in this position, we see that both the bishop and the knight are aiming right here at that c7 square. This could be trouble. Okay, so black doesn't notice that, and they just feign to their bishop to g7. But then, here comes a fork. And a fork in chess is something that I'll explain right now. Um, so, where does Nandy Dandy and plays uh, knight to c7, knight takes c7 actually, with check. So it is check, uh, it is attacking the e8 king. There's only one king. Um, but uh, it is also attacking another piece, and that's the rook. The, the king and the rook are under attack. So this is called a fork. It's forking two pieces. One piece must move, uh, or you can completely ignore the fork. But you can't ignore the fork in this position because the king and rook are the threat. So see if you add an extra arrow here, it kind of looks like a fork, but without this arrow, it's just like this. And that is a fork. Knights are the pieces that fork the most in chess. Uh, so let's see here. Um, a reason that black cannot just take the knight is because then you would lose the queen, because the bishop here protects the knight from being captured by the queen. So the king moves and then we just take the rook. That's a fork. Look out for them when you're playing chess because they can be very useful. You can win lots of material when you're giving up a, a smaller piece for uh, a major piece, a smaller piece for a piece that is worth more. So uh, here the king has to move. And then when you take it, this knight will actually probably be trapped since there's no more places to move it. For example, if you add another attacker here, playing your knight here, uh, to add an attacker here, this knight can't move anywhere. So you're pretty probably going to lose it, but you will have lost it for a rook, and a rook is more valuable. So say you just um, you just develop, then all you need to do is expose an attack on the knight, and then you're just going to win it, because if it moves here, we just take it with the knight, sorry, not with the queen. And if you move it here, we'll just take it with the pawn. Okay, anyways, that's one fork. Uh, let's move to another example. Here, I'll give you guys a few seconds to try to find a fork, and yeah, I'll just give you a few seconds. Okay, so for those of you who found it, great job, and that is the move knight to c5 here. Uh, sorry, knight to c5, attacking the king, the king, queen, and the rook. So knight to c5, we see that fork again, except th this time it's attacking in a slightly different manner. The last manner we saw was like this. But you get the idea. It's still a fork. Fork like this, and if you add the extra line there for the handle, then you got a fork. Um, so yeah, so white is nandy dandy here. White's going to be up some material, because once you save the queen, you take the rook, and you'll just be up two. But here you actually up more, because you have a rook, a queen, a bishop, and they have a queen and a bishop, and we have three pawns, and they have two pawns. So we're probably going to win this game with... Uh, not it's not too difficult to win okay so that's a fork let's look at that one more time here knight to c5 forks the queen and the rook if we add that handle then we have a fork uh but the fork is without the handle sorry um so yeah the uh as black here let's swap the board as black here you'd probably want to save the queen so you move the queen aside, they take the rook, and we take at least the knight for rook compensation. Actually, definitely don't do that. Uh, not in this position. Save the... You can't actually save the rook. You can't actually take the knight because... Look at that. It's eyeing the rook. Uh, I made up this position without even noticing that. You won't actually be able to even take the knight. You'll just have to move the queen away. Uh, say here. And then they'll, you, they'll take the knight. Uh, they'll take the rook, sorry, and then we'll move the um, queen, because see here, if you try to defend the rook, uh, then they take the rook, and if you take the knight, you're just totally down. The computer says you're it's mate in 10, and you're like down 70-something, because then you uh, take the queen, and then you're just definitely going to win. Uh, so let's look at one last example here. Okay, in this example here, try to find the fork, 
Um, you should probably be getting the idea by now, so just pause the video and try to find the fork. Okay, so for those of you who found the fork, great job in eyeing out knight to e5. So knight to e5, sorry, I'm very giggly right now. I made a really weird face while I was giving you guys a couple of seconds. If you want, you can look at that uh, after you're done. Okay, so uh, we're attacking the f7 and d7 pieces. Uh, that is the king and queen. So... Uh, this is a very deadly fork because we're going to lose uh, the queen because the king has to move and nothing can take the knight. So the king moves and you at least get the um, knight on a compensation. Actually, you don't even have to move the king uh, to attack the knight because you, you can just pick it up with the bishop. Okay, so that is the final fork. I hope you understand and have a pretty good idea what a fork is by now. Uh, just attacking two pieces with usually a knight, but not always a knight. It could be a piece that is attacking two pieces um so here we see a fork you can add the handle and that's pretty much it uh that's a fork i hope you guys enjoyed this video this is my first middle games video as you probably know if you've been watching the, the videos that i've been putting um so yes that is a fork a fork right here uh remember not to bring forks when you're uh, playing chess because uh, you won't get any extra points or any bonus things for just bringing a fork. Uh, if you do bring a fork, though, remember to bring some spaghetti because forks in themselves are boring. Um, but this is a fork uh, in chess. So look for forks uh, while you're playing chess and use them to gain material. In this case, you'd gain six points. Uh, but yes, don't bring a fork to a real chess game. I don't think you'll gain much. But if you do, just remember to bring spaghetti. I hope you guys enjoy this video, and we'll see you later. Bye!